that the God of the universe is going to meet us and move us on. And that the story is ours to continue. And that's part two. If, if part one of the, what I think Mark's subtlety is here, if part one of Mark's subtlety is that he, he cuts it off knowing that they will eventually get to the fact that these guys must have seen Jesus. Part two of what I think he is subtly trying to do is to say, it's yours to finish the story, right? You in the living room get to be the signs of the resurrection, the appearances, the, the power of the resurrection where you are. And by the way, that translates to every generation in every living room of Christians since. So part one is they had to get this second shot. Part two is Mark leaves the story to be completed by us. I'm, I'm working with a church in, in Westport, Connecticut. Some of you are from that church. I'm working with a church there. We put together a series, a fall series in a COVID George Floyd election year season. And we're asking how to do improvisation as faithful people in this circumstance. And the, the series keeps coming back to yes and, which is the mandate of improvisational actors. If you start a scene, I don't get to say, well, I don't want to be in a barber shop. You, you start the scene cutting, seeming like you're cutting my hair and asking me questions. I don't get to say, well, I'd rather be in a, a fast car, right? I have to go with what you say and I get to kind of sneak the story on a little and then somebody else on our little troop gets to sneak it on a little more. There's something improvisational about the end of Mark about saying yes and so that, so that we see this trajectory and then we ask, what's my part in it? What is next in this story of this brilliant life that, that then became a, a brilliant death that summoned godlikeness in its mortality and then rose unvisited? What's the next step for that and what part is mine in that? next stepping. I believe Mark had his group in mind and the Holy Spirit had our group in mind. And somehow we come away from 16.8 with both gratitude and a sense of call. Both gratitude to a God who raises the dead and for whom nothing is impossible. And a call to complete the story, to move it on in this generation. Now, as we have always hazarded, or as we have always risked, that may seem like a whole lot of Alan and a whole little of Mark, right? It's, it's always a danger to say, you know, it's, it's like Shazam, it, Alan just made Mark mean more than Mark ever thought he was gonna mean, or Alan took Mark in a direction he, right? This isn't simply my reading, it's, it's other scholars, but 